barely two years after Three Kingdoms released. Four days in two years, actually. Three Kingdoms is dead. Creative Assembly released a video announcing that the development for Total War Three Kingdoms is officially over. Not only that, but the last patch they just dropped on us was the last patch and the last bit of support we will get for the game. So basically, we have a game called Total War Three Kingdoms that never actually reaches the Three Kingdoms setup. More on that later in the video though. Now, this was completely unexpected. This was out of the blue. Not to mention the video itself was really, really confusing. And really the only thing we got is that they're super happy with how the game ended and we've already got another Three Kingdoms game in development. Now the fallout from this is pretty expected. CA changing the title of the video from a dev update to the future of Total War or whatever it happened is only confirmation of this, that this was a poorly executed video, it was a poorly executed move uh, with absolutely nothing forewarning us that it will happen and the review bombs by the core of the community only shows that confirmation even more. This was honestly just a really terrible move by Creative Assembly, in part because there's no explanation giving for its termination. And let's be real, it has been terminated. This is not a wrapped up scenario. The game is not complete. By any means of the term, it's been terminated. And no actual information on top of that on what's coming in the future. We don't have anything other than it'll be tied more to the novel. That's literally all that we have. It feels like a betrayal at several levels, and especially since at one point we knew that there were at least two more large chunks of actual content being planned. And on release, it was the hope from the developers in an interview that Three Kingdoms would be supported and developed for several years into the future, not this Three Kingdoms universe crap, the actual Total War Three Kingdoms. So how can you drop this bombshell of an announcement without having at least some sort of information on your next title besides it's in the Three Kingdoms universe and it's going to tie closer to the novel? Were they not prepared to do this so soon? What pushed them to release this video so quickly at the drop of a hat and just abandon a game that was supposed to span years. In this video, I want to look at several different things, why I think it was abandoned, uh, what we can quote unquote look forward to with Three Kingdoms the Second. Yes, I'm calling it Three Kingdoms the Second. This is Total War pre Three Kingdoms. I'm gonna call it Three Kingdoms the First and how we sure as hell better not be looking at a completely full price game with this next one. So, as I mentioned, I feel like this game has been terminated, that it's been abandoned. There's several things that I feel like have uh, contributed to this. For one, it's, it's no small thing to say that Three Kingdoms has been controversial its entire development. For one, the, the setting was not appealing to the Western audience. Um, different things aside from that, it just wasn't appealing to a large part of its community. The setting, uh, compared to the current politics, I'm not going into details, but it's just a reality that the current geopolitical situation didn't help at all, especially with that Western audience. The fantasy setting, I don't think was too disappointing, but it was the fact that it was a fantasy setting that still called a historical Total War game with the records mode that really felt tacked on, and the records mode was just the same as romance but with features removed there was nothing in the records mode that was unique that really encouraged you to play it over the romance now i'll admit i played a lot of the romance mode majority of my time playing the game was in romance mode i'm going to throw that out there right now as a historical total war player i enjoyed for the most part the romance mode but I would have enjoyed the records mode had there 
been more reason to play it. And then, probably one of the biggest areas is its DLC practice. Now, I will also admit that I think a majority of this DLC was very well done. I really liked playing a majority of the DLC. If you look at my Three Kingdoms DLC reviews, uh, most of it has a lot of really solid content that adds a lot of mechanics to the game, and I think we were just on the cusp of Three Kingdoms being what we could call a grand strategy game. But the order in which the DLC was chosen to release really derailed the vision and the development practice of the entire production. The fact that they chose the eight princes when you have what is a relatively empty shell of a game on release, choosing eight princes, something that takes place a hundred years later for your first DLC, come on. Who decided that was a positive thing? And I do believe it is the worst reviewed DLC of the six in this genre. Again, a good DLC overall, but picking that as your first DLC after release was disastrous. And it set a trend, a practice of a lack of cohesion. There is nothing in here that progresses the game naturally, I feel, at least in terms of the order that it was released. There's nothing in there that says, oh, okay, we're naturally progressing to one point. It was just, we're going to go here, and we're going to add this person, and then we're going to over here, and then we're going to do this. The vision just seemed convoluted from the get-go. So I think the combination of just the controversial setting, uh, the, the, the romance and the records in a single game, when clearly one was just stripped of features and thrown in there. I'm not going to, I mean... If they did put development into records mode, uh, it doesn't show. <laughs> uh, it's just very frustrating. So to see all of this, to see a majority of your DLC under a mixed setting or a negative setting, it's pretty clear that it did not sell terribly well. It was not terribly well received. And so it's pretty obvious to me that it was just abandoned. Now, moving on, because we have to address the elephant in the room, non-men excluded. We have Three Kingdoms the second, and I think because it's been not so well received, I think they decided to make an entirely new game to kind of wash away the stains of the first one. But what it seems also to me is that uh, it's going to start right at the end of Three Kingdoms the first, and I feel like they made this an entirely new game so that they can do something completely different. If they're gonna base it more on the novel, it's probably gonna have a super, super balls to the wall heavy fantasy focus, which I'm on the fence about. I don't know what that looks like. Are we gonna see Warhammer, but three kingdoms? I mean, what are we gonna see here? I don't know. Are we gonna see uh, an actual tiger god? Are we gonna see, I mean, I just, I, I don't get it. I don't, I felt like the fantasy was enough, and it tied close enough to the novels, but I guess that wasn't enough. Which means that Three Kingdoms, the first, is completely under a false naming. You could call it false advertising, as it's more of a prequel that's going to set up the actual Three Kingdoms time period in Three Kingdoms, the second. I doubt that was intentional, but it's there nonetheless, and it leaves a really, really bad taste. I mean, imagine if you had a game called Rome 2, well, we'll call it Total War Rome, and what you have instead is a game from the Bronze Age right up to right before the Romans found their Republic, and then the game ends. And then Creative Assembly comes in with Total War Rome 2, and it's like, hey, now you get to actually play as Rome. That's kind of how this feels, and it feels icky and gross and leaves a very, very bad taste in my mouth. And we have to address the other elephant in the room. We are going to probably be looking at a full price game. Uh, if they are using a completely dedicated Three Kingdoms team, we're looking at a full price $60 game 
from something we should have gotten from the get-go. Now, that being said, we better not see a full price gain. Um, honestly, Three Kingdoms a Second could be the perfect definition of a saga title, and I, oh, I hope it's marketed as such. Uh, mainly because the saga titles, they push themselves as, what, a, a, a lower budget game that reuses assets that are already there to make something to satiate the masses kind of a deal. But here's the kicker, we haven't necessarily had a saga title that was completely fantasy. Troy notwithstanding, however you want to interpret that. But there's no way they are going to spend development time and development money making an entirely new game of the Three Kingdoms period from scratch. They're not going to make models from scratch. They're not going to make your maps from scratch. They're not going to make your mechanics from scratch. Now, there may be some new ones in there, but I guarantee you that 90% or more of the Total War Three Kingdoms, the first, will be reused in Total War Three Kingdoms, the second. We know you're going to use it. We know you're going to use it, Creative Assembly. Don't skirt around it. Say you're going to. Be, be loud and proud about it, but don't act like if they do, and we again don't know anything. So I, I'm. This is all conjecture and uh, you know speculation. But if they're gonna charge sixty dollars for a game, in which they've reused a vast majority, if not all, of the Three Kingdom, the first assets, I don't know how I can support that. The only other justifiable way to charge that much money is if we are looking at the new engine, which should have been paid for from Epic's money from Total War Saga Troy, so that shouldn't factor into it. Unless it's just so vastly different that it blows us away, and in which case, uh, you still better have some damn good mechanics that make me want to pay $60, even if I'm part of the content partner by then. But, I don't know. It's just all, it's all gross. It's all gross, it's disgusting. Um, and quite frankly, I'm really upset. I know I probably don't sound, I'm not raging, I don't, I don't tend to, I may just be screaming in my mind, but I'm not going to be screaming into the mic, uh, but it's just, it just seems like they don't know what they're doing, they didn't know what they wanted to do with the game, they tried doing something uh, because it seemed cool, but they didn't consider the community, and so when the community backlashed it through repeated DLC, instead of trying to consistently make the game better and better and squash bugs and create coherent, concise DLC, they decided to just cut the project, call it quits, make a fancy video that makes it sound like they are proud that they have created a full entire game, which they haven't. There are still apparent bugs that the patch hasn't fixed that we are now never going to get fixed. And then they're gonna turn right around and say, oh, hey, by the way, we got another game in that series that is in development at, at uh, some level that we can't say anything about, apparently. Absolutely nothing aside from it's going to stick to the novel and I'm, I don't know. I'm just, I'm frustrated. So to wrap this up, because I don't want to ramble too long, I feel like CA has just burned loads of trust on both the fantasy and the historical sides of the community with this announcement and with this development. They've kind of been on rocky rocky terms lately anyways. There's been a lot of things that I haven't been too impressed with with Creative Assembly and how they've handled releases and how they've handled content and the constant leaks which are getting worse and worse with every single update to this thing. Surprisingly enough, the biggest news in the last took few months, the fact that they are abandoning an entire game, didn't get leaked. But we've got leaks on Warhammer 3 out the wazoo. That boat's going to sink any minute now from the leaks that we've got in there. But somehow, this big, huge announcement didn't get out. But it shows that regardless of what is said by any person on the team, or regardless of what is done, a game can seemingly end at the drop of a hat with little to no reasoning or transparency. Anytime, 
any company, not just Creative Assembly, but anytime any sort of game development company or other company in the world, regardless of your business, consistently hides behind PR talk and smoke and shadows and this functional leaky mess that we're in right now, it's a bad sign for any game currently in development. I'm looking at you, Warhammer 3, or any other game that is looking to be developed. We know that, uh, you know, the Sophia studio is working on something, but who knows if that might get dropped because of the backlash of what's happening now. There's gotta be a pure historical game coming, right? I mean, there has to be, whether it's Medieval 3 or Empire 2 or Rome 3 or Shogun 300. But is that up for grabs now? Or are we just going to see a potential fallout from that, even though we haven't even heard anything yet? I don't know how to really end this sort of video. I've never gone off script. This wasn't even a scripted video. I'm just a bit upset. And even though I only have 400 hours in this game, there are people who have thousands of hours. And it just gets dropped. And it gets dropped. And we get another game in the same universe, quote unquote. I don't know. It just feels like we've been betrayed uh, really hard. That both sides of a community have been screwed. And I don't know how to really take it. So, uh, yeah. Yeah. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know what you think. But uh, honestly, and please, for the love of God, don't uh, no personal attacks on any of the employees. Um, this isn't directed towards any employee. This is directed towards the business overall, uh, the business practice overall, um, and development of a game that had a ton of potential if they just would have taken the time to stick with it more than two years. Um, but... I guess it is what it is. So, uh, yeah. Guess I'll see you guys later. Bye.